Hi guys. Today is Monday, January 22nd. I am going to start my first dose of the terzepatide peptide. I weighed in this morning at 271.4. That's roughly nine pounds, no, sorry, 11 pounds altogether um, between the last three weeks. I am hoping that this terzepatide peptide will give me a little more um, reduction of the food noise and just weight loss in general. From what I've read, it's supposed to do better with weight loss when, you know, um, put head to head with the semaglutide. So I uh, reconstituted the vial today. So I'll show you guys what that looks like. Um, bear with me. It's a little bit of a longer video because this was my first time uh, doing the reconstitution. It should get faster. Um, although, I mean, I guess you, you do want to take your time with it. So it's not like it's a trying to be speed racer or anything like that. But I will show you what that reconstitution looks like. And then I will come back and I will show you my first injection of the terzepatide. Okay, so this is the terzepatide peptide. It comes dehydrated. There's a different word for it, but it's kind of down here. This is the bacteriostatic water, otherwise known as BAC water. We're going to reconstitute. We're going to take 0.5 milliliters and put it into this 5 milligram vial. A good rule of thumb is if you have a five milligram, it's, you're gonna divide it. Um, so like if it's a 10 milligram, then you'd wanna put one milligram. A 10 milligram, you're gonna put one milliliter, excuse me, of water. So first you're going to, I've already washed my hands. You're going to take the lid off of the bacteriostatic water. Just pops right off. And take the lid off of this. Ideally, you'd be wearing gloves. Take that off. I'm gonna take a alcohol prep pad. You're going to sterilize the tops of these. Make sure it's all nice and as sterile as possible. I have a lure lock syringe. This goes to three milliliters. This is the needle that I will be using on it. It just pops in and then you twist it. And then you pull the lid off. So what you want to do is because these are vacuum pressurized, you're going to want to put in as much air as you're going to be taking out water. So in our case, it's just going to be right here. Now this kind has a cone on it. You're going to be using this line, not the cone, to tell you where the, um, the marker is. So you're going to take this, pop it in to here. Push the amount of air in, and then it automatically wants to take the same amount out, if not a little bit more. So what we're going to do, I don't know if you can tell, there is air in here that it got. So I'm going to pop that back in, put my needle down farther, so that we're just getting um, as much liquid as we need. I'm going to take the needle out. Now, a lot of times what you'd be doing is actually flipping this upside down while you do it. It's just it's hard to get in the shot. So you can see here that it is about 0.5. I'm going to push this up a little bit just so we're exactly at the mark. I'm going to take this. Oops. 
don't want to do that, but you know, sometimes things happen. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that again. Put this needle in. And because it was a vacuum sealed area, it just sucked it right down. Make sure all of it's out. Generally, you'd want to try to um, not let it just suction straight in like that. Some people say that the harder the backwater hits the peptide, um, it can degrade the peptides. Some people say it's a bunch of malarkey. It's a, I have no idea. And take this out. You can see that all the liquid and the water is out. I'm going to cap this once again. Unscrew that. This can go into a sharps container to get disposed of later. Now you just want to take this and gently roll it so that you try to get all of the powder into the liquid. It shouldn't take a ton of time. Um, some peptides take longer to dissolve than others. But basically when you're done, you will have just a clear liquid. Um, some people say that you can um, use it immediately after the liquid has become clear. Others say that they prefer to wait, um, that they prefer to wait for it to be uh, like a half hour to an hour after it's done. The bacteriostatic water, I've just recently learned, should not be kept in the refrigerator, um, opened or unopened. Is um, In labs, they keep it in a cool, dark area between 60 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So I took mine out of the fridge earlier today and I'll be keeping it in my pantry. Apparently, if it gets too cold or too hot, it degrades the alcohol that's in here that keeps it bacteriostatic. Um, this, however, I'm going to be using only half of this since this is 5 milligrams. I'm going to be starting out today with 2.5 milligrams. So this will go back in the fridge. Even though it has the bacteriostatic water in it, that is a good way to preserve the peptide. And anecdotally, other folks... Um, on the forums that I'm on, they've been putting their opened bacteriostatic water in the fridge as well. It should be good up to 28 days after it's been opened and punctured. I, since I'm using it in a relatively short amount of time, I'm not too worried about keeping it in the fridge. But again, your risk assessment is going to be up to you. And even though it's said for labs, they keep it out of the fridge. Uh, this isn't really, you know, lab conditions, so. But that's all there is. I will come back later this afternoon and I will show you the injection. Okay, so to the best of my ability, I have this at the two and a half um, mark. That's going to be where this top line is. I tried to get it between the second and third slash. Um, so I guess we'll do this. I already cleaned the area around here. It's in. I have injected it fully. Maybe this will be a little easier to see the needle. It's very, very small. It's 0.4 millimeters. It's um, insulin needles. And you can kind of see a little bit of the injection site right there. But, I mean, it's it did not hurt. It was not um, super fun, but... It was not awful at all. All right, so I just took my first injection of the 
what I'm hoping is terzepatide, because again, I didn't test this stuff. So I'm just having to go off of the reputation of the place that I purchased it from. Um, the needle, like it definitely had some resistance going in, um, but I think that's just more on me being hesitant than, you know, saying anything about the needle or anything like that. It's super small. Um, I, I had more resistance on the syringe than I thought that I would. I thought it would just very easily um, go down, but I did have to put more pressure on it, which I think is kind of interesting. Had a little bit of pinpoint bleeding from the area that I showed you guys. And I guess I'll just check it out, you know, every day or so and see if I got a bruise or anything like that. Um, I do it in my legs as opposed to my stomach because I've heard anecdotally that uh, you get less side effects if you do it in your legs. Some people do it um, like in their arms, this part of the like fleshy part of the arm, which I would think the inside of the arm would be super uh, sensitive and tender. But maybe, so maybe they just stick like with the outside where they still have some meat. I don't know. I have very uh, sturdy thighs. So I figure I'm still getting it into um, the skin or the fat like you're supposed to, like you would if you were injecting it into your stomach. But I, I'm all about not getting those side effects if I can at all help it. Because you know, your girl hates to get nauseous. So if I can ward against that, I'm going to. Okay, this is the first day of terzepatide. Wish me luck.